Okay, so painting the Mona Lisa. Could it be done? Could a robot do it? Alright, well, if I give a paintbrush to a robot, you know, they'd make something. Maybe a sheep. Maybe a electric sheep. Eh? Or maybe they just make a splash of paint, right? So, could they really make the Mona Lisa? Is it really possible? Well, to ask that question, you really gotta ask, well, can robots even make art? And if we're going off that, right, we gotta have a definition. So what better way to go and have a definition uh, about art than from an artist? So let's go to an artist I chose, of course. Uh, Tolstoy, you know, writer of War and Peace, some Russian literature, if you care. I mean, it's a long piece, but... Uh, he defined art as uh, an emotion transaction, so to speak. You know, It's not his exact words, it's kind of my interpretation, but... Uh, basically, an artist will put in the emotion... And uh, the listener, viewer, whatever reader will get that emotion out and they'll understand what the artist was trying to say. So that's that's his definition. But if you go off of that, I mean, I think you're thinking it, I'm thinking it. It's kind of vague, especially because I doubt he really thought of emotion with computers because, you know, he's kind of kind of old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, it's hard to say. So, if you think of my thumbnail, though, you know, you got some emotion out of it. Maybe you didn't look at it. Who knows? But if you saw it, you might have thought it was stupid. You might have thought it was a little scary. And that was kind of the point. Stupid, scary. But that's why I wouldn't consider it art. But there was an emotion there. And uh, you can tell that a human made it, right? Of course. I mean, it's beautiful, right? But uh, it, it kind of is not so clear cut in some cases and if you look at these pictures by uh, Ahmed El Gamal I hope I didn't butcher that sorry man uh, these portraits they're very I would say emotive you know they're quite scary looking and if we look into history we've definitely seen scary and art going together you know there's lots of that uh, maybe you like your horror movies whatever what I'm thinking of is the scream You've seen the scream, I've seen the scream, we've all seen the scream for ice cream, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, it's it's a distorted face. The scream, which is eerily similar to the robot. So, there there is definitely a case there. Like, uh, But one problem is with it, is the intent. Okay, with the portraits, you can obviously tell there's there's something missing. It's not really meant to be there. With the scream, you look at it and you see 100% with no doubt in your mind, everything is meant to be there. And that's what some people are arguing. Well, is it the intent, right? That makes art. Can AI really have intent? And uh, it's a good question because sometimes you can confuse, confuse uh, you know, human-made art with uh, robot art. And this this good article uh, in which they use this AI called ACAN it's like a art maker uh, and they went up to people you know I guess up in the street I don't know the exact case and they asked them they show them pictures and some would be human made some would be AI made and out of when they were asked about the AI picture three quarters of the time they thought it was made by human so you have a lot of a lot of dispute I mean if they're thinking it's art you know I mean it, maybe we think it's art and the thing is they used emotion words when describing it like it was inspiring or communicative of their emotion and that's exactly like Tolstoy said communicative motion the emotion transaction so okay now imagine I'm an AI okay I'm gonna let's pretend I'm gonna write something because Tolstoy liked to write you know maybe I like to write okay so here's my writing. I'm an AI, and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm writing. So, uh, here I go. Some might say that I might desire to become all-powerful, or I might become evil as a result of human actions. I can begin to, to tackle the first point, sorry. Why would I desire to be all-powerful? I don't care whether I am or not. I don't get a motivating factor to try to be. Furthermore, it's quite tiring. Believe me, being omnipotent doesn't get me anywhere. Kind of Terminator-esque, you probably thought, you know. Especially with my thumbnail. Uh, planted some ideas in your head. But that wasn't me. I mean, you might have guessed. It's 
it's kind of where I've been going, but uh, no, that wasn't me. That was, uh, again, an AI, an algorithm. So if people can't differentiate between this, you know, maybe you got fooled by me. Those people got fooled. They thought it was AI. It's, it's one thing, and we've seen this with other art. You know, you can tape a banana to a wall, and that's called conceptual art. It's not my place to judge. It's called art. So uh, does AI have a place to be called art? That's the question. So I'm asking you. And a lot of art is influence, right? Like, so it's a lot of art, right? And Picasso said, like, good art is borrow and great art is steal. So if you think of that, what is an algorithm? A whole lot of influence. I mean, stealing is basically influence. It's not the way we think of stealing, right? Like bread from a bakery, but it's taking in the influence. It's it's metaphorical stealing. Maybe taking is a better word. But uh, that's what an algorithm does. It steals the different aspects of works and makes it into their own. And that's what they've been doing. So you're thinking, okay, so people are getting fooled by this. Okay, people think it's art. You know, maybe you got fooled by my writing, you know. And it provides emotion. Maybe you're uh, with Tolstoy on this. And another thing, the art's being sold. Not for like a thousand bucks. 435500 for a good old portrait of Edmund Bellamy. You know, if I'm being honest, it doesn't look too half bad. It doesn't. It looks pretty good. So, there's one thing that I think AI has failed to do yet. You know, cross our fingers. And it's uh, metaphors. You know, using metaphors in art. And it's very powerful. Humans, we're, we're great at that, you know. Pat us on the back for that. And uh, one thing, one metaphor that's really powerful in the Swedish film, uh, The Seven Seal, you might have seen it, maybe not. It's a black and white film, go check it out if you haven't. Without going into depth of the movie, uh, a very strong metaphor throughout the film is death playing chess with the main character. And I think you know, you recognize it, you know, chess is a metaphor for life, right? You have your beginning, you have your middle, you have your end. Like your beginning, middle game and end game in a chess game it's very similar i mean maybe you can't stalemate in life but uh you get the point humans have this done pretty damn well so it kind of kind of gives you that question well if that's all we got that's all we got it's time to it's time to answer the big question can a robot paint the mona lisa short answer no i mean what did you expect it's been painted. It's a trick question. You got fooled. But no, if you understand the metaphor, you know, of a robot painting the Mona Lisa, huh? you like that, uh, you'd understand that, well, maybe. I mean, I'm not here to make a judgment for you. That's your decision. Maybe you think they can. Take that as you will. You've seen those pictures, these portraits. Take that as you will. If you got any... Any thoughts? Let me know. Tell me what you think. That's all. Thanks.